Biological solar panels. Yes, that's right. Today's video is all about plants, specifically the light dependent reaction of photosynthesis. So stay tuned because I'm going to help you master this. So we're covering the light dependent reaction. This is quite a tricky process and it's one that's been requested by a number of my students. So don't forget to drop a like below if this helps you out. So some key terms and definitions we need to go over first of all. Reduction is the gain of electrons or protons or the loss of oxygen. And we remember it with the mnemonic RIG. So reduction is gain of electrons or protons. And remember, protons can also be H+. Oxidation is the loss of electrons or protons. So we give it the mnemonic OIL. Oxidation is loss. But also oxidation can mean the gain of oxygen. This always happens together. Wherever one thing is re reduced, another molecule will be oxidized. So we call these redox reactions because they involve reduction, R-E-D, and oxidation, O-X. A coenzyme, next of all, is something that works with an enzyme. It's a molecule that works with an enzyme. And we're going to look at some examples of them, but just, just for now, NADPH is going to be the key one in this lesson. So NADPH is a coenzyme that transfers hydrogen. So we can see it's got a H on the end, and that is the hydrogen. ATP is the universal energy currency of the cell, and it stands for adenosine triphosphate. ADP stands for adenosine diphosphate, di meaning two, two phosphates. Think photo, photograph, that means light. Lysis means splitting, so we're splitting water using light. Phosphorylation, phospho, we're adding phosphate. Photophosphorylation, we're adding phosphate using the light. Photoionization, that's where the light is causing the release of an electron. Hydrolysis is splitting by adding water. Decarboxylation, decarboxy, removing carbon dioxide, carboxy. Metabolism is the sum total of all the chemical reactions in a cell or organism. Condensation is forming a bond with the release of water. And ATP synthase is an enzyme that catalyzes the formation of ATP, the energy currency molecule. Finally, chloroplast is an organelle that contains chlorophyll, and it's the site of photosynthesis in plants. So now we've covered those key terms, which are the prerequisite knowledge needed to understand photosynthesis. Let's get into an overview. So at GCSE, you will have learned that the sun shines light, and that light energy is used to combine carbon dioxide and water to make glucose. And oxygen is released as a waste product. And this all happens with chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is the pigment that absorbs light. So that's basically where you'll be up to at GCSE. Now, what we're going to do is add some additional context to that, some additional information. So there's two types of reaction you need to know about. The first is the light dependent reaction. And that's because it depends on light, so it needs light. And the second is the light independent reaction. That's the one that's independent of light. Although it does need some products from the light dependent reaction, so it's not entirely independent. It just doesn't need light directly shining on it to occur. Now the light dependent reaction occurs in the phylicoid membranes of the chloroplast, which we're going to label in a moment. And the light independent reaction occurs in the stroma, which is the fluid of the chloroplast. Now, this is a really nice overview of photosynthesis. We can see the light shining down at the top. And what we have is water coming in and oxygen leaving. And this light reactions here is a simplification of quite a detailed and complex process. And what we can see is from the light dependent reaction, we have ATP and NADPH entering the Calvin cycle, which is the light independent stage. And then coming back from the Calvin cycle, we have NADP plus and ADP plus an inorganic phosphate going back to the light reaction. So you can see that the light reaction needs the independent reaction. And the light independent reaction needs the light dependent reaction. Now, the light independent reaction is where 
carbon dioxide is used. So here where we've got carbon dioxide going into the plant, that's the portion of the reaction that it uses carbon dioxide. And then we've got sugar being produced here, which is something like glucose or something like that. Now, this is the structure of a chloroplast. I highly recommend you draw this. So it's got a double membrane, first of all. We have the outer membrane and the inner membrane. And then within it, the fluid, the aqueous fluid, meaning water-based fluid, is the stroma. That's where the light independent reaction is going to occur. Then we have these, they almost look like pancakes. They're like flattened frisbees. And they're phylicoids. So each one of those is a phylicoid membrane. And those phylicoids represented in green contain loads of chlorophyll and accessory pigments, which are arranged into photosystems. Now, when you have a stack of phylicoids together, that forms a granum, or the plural of granum is grana. So there are many grana within that organelle. Now, this is a nice little overview of the light-dependent reaction, and it's got some fantastic detail in it. So we can see we've got two photosystems and just remember that photosystem two is first and photosystem one is second. So what happens to begin is light will hit photosystem two. Now photosystem two has chlorophyll at the base of it and two electrons from the magnesium in the chlorophyll will become excited to a higher energy level and they're going to move to an electron acceptor. Now once they've gone to that electron acceptor, the chlorophyll has been oxidized and the electron acceptor has been reduced. So that's why we covered redox reactions at the start of the lesson. Now, going from the electron acceptor to photosystem one, the electrons move down an electron transport chain, driving the energy from that will drive the formation of ATP from ADP plus inorganic phosphate. Then what happens is light hits photosystem one, exciting electrons, raising them to a higher energy level, and the electron acceptor will become reduced. Rig, reduction is gain of electrons. Now this can happen cyclically, where electrons pass from the first electron acceptor to photosystem one, to the second electron acceptor, back to the first, and it can go round and round like that, and it can produce small amounts of ATP. Or it can happen non-cyclically, which will involve the electrons passing to the coenzyme NADP. So if the electrons pass to NADP along with protons, it will form NADPH, which is needed in the light independent reaction. Now we need protons and we need electrons to replenish this system. So the electrons here go and replenish photosystem two. And the hydrogen ions here, aka the protons, go to the NADP. So I'll represent that here with these arrows. Now, don't worry. I know I've thrown a lot of content at you here, a lot of detailed knowledge, but we're going to break it down now. I highly recommend again that you draw this diagram and then we're going to go through the steps now. So step one, light hits chlorophyll at the base of photosystem two and two electrons are excited to a higher energy level. The electrons are accepted by an electron acceptor, and we can see that happening here. Number two, the electrons pass down an electron transport chain. The energy released drives the formation of ATP via photophosphorylation, and the protons are going to move through ATP synthase. More on that in a moment, I'm really gonna break down on a molecular level what happens here. Next of all, step three, light is going to hit photosystem one and electrons from chlorophyll are excited to a higher energy level and accepted by a second electron acceptor. So we've gone photosystem two to the electron acceptor to photosystem one to the second electron acceptor. Number four, the electrons may then either replenish the first electron acceptor and we call this cyclic photophosphorylation. Cyclic because it happens in a cycle. Photophosphorylation because we're adding phosphate with light. Or it will bind to NADP in non-cyclic photophosphorylation. Step five is photolysis. This is where light splits a molecule of water to form two electrons, two protons, and an oxygen atom. 
or half an oxygen molecule. The protons combine with NADP and the electrons from photosystem 1 to form NADPH. The NADPH then enters the Calvin cycle in the stroma of the chloroplast which we drew earlier. Now no, cyclic photophosphorylation only involves photosystem 1 and it won't lead to the production of NADPH. So let's look in a little bit more detail at the electron transport chain. And that's between the first electron acceptor and photosystem 1. So energy from electrons are going to drive protons across the membrane, so from the stroma into the phylicoids. Now, this will build up a proton gradient in the phylicoid space, which will then flow through ATP synthase, which is this orange enzyme here, generating ATP. So let's break it down. The energy released by electrons as they move down the electron transport chain transports protons, H+, hydrogen ions, into the phylicoids from the stroma. There will now be a higher concentration of protons in the phylicoids compared to the stroma. These protons will then move down a chemiosmotic gradient, which is what we call that, a chemiosmotic gradient, through ATP synthase, which will enable it to catalyze the formation of ATP. So to summarize, the light-dependent reaction takes place in the phylicoid membranes, aka the grana and intergranal lamellae. Photophosphorylation is where hydrogen ions, aka protons, flow through ATP synthase at the end of the electron transport chain, forming ATP from ADP plus inorganic phosphate. Photolysis is where light energy is used to split water into two protons, two electrons, and half an oxygen molecule. The end products of non-cyclic photophosphorylation are ATP, NADPH, and oxygen. The end products of cyclic photophosphorylation are ATP. So guys, hopefully that's enabled you to make progress in photosynthesis and understand the light-dependent reaction in greater detail. Drop in the comments what you want to see next, and I will see you in the next one.